Hello, this is Dr. Amin Marash, a retina specialist from Aleppo, Syria. This course is about clinical changes in RPE. This presentation is about case report series part two. An 81 years old pseudophagic, his best corrected visual acuity is 2200 in his right eye while his left eye the best corrected visual acuity is 2035 presented with signs of AMD in both eyes retinal exam. Find this examination shows drusen, RPE elevation and subretinal fluid. OCT cross section show areas of RPE detachment induced by fibrovascular membrane and subretinal fluid along of disrupted ellipsoid zone. Diagnosis is with EMD with occult choroidal neovascularization. This patient managed with monthly intravitreal aflipercept for three consecutive injections and one month post-treatment. OCT cross-section shows resolving of both subretinal fluid and fibrovascular BED leaving RPE changes and improved vision to 2050 only due to disturbance of ellipsoid zone and the patient was followed up using PRN protocol. With AMD can present as occult cradle neovascularization which features a vascular proliferation sub-RPE and subretinal and intraretinal fluid. Management with three consecutive monthly VGF blockade agents intravitreal injection. If post-treatment OCT shows regression of PED and inactive occult cardiovascular neovascular membrane, then a treat and extend protocol is used to manage this case where the injection is administered every 8 weeks then every 12 weeks. If no improvement no noted then the agent of anti-VGF should be changed. However, VGF trap agents have better uh, response to cases of PED than anti-VGF agents. A cold choroidal neovascular membrane has better visual prognosis than classical neovascularization and intraretinal cysts which both have worse prognosis due to subretinal scar formation and intraretinal tissue disorganization. A 78 years old lady, pseudophagic, presented with reduced vision. Her best corrected visual acuity is hand motion in her right eye, while her left eye, the best corrected visual acuity is 2040. Fundus examination shows signs of AMD. On clinical exam, a smooth, well-defined border of RPE elevation along with slight pale appearance accompanied by subretinal fluid and exudation along with drusen and subretinal scar. OCT scan shows PED which features RPE elevation with smooth borders that contains clear fluids that looks like homogeneous hyperreflective area with subretinal fluids accompanied by ellipsoid zone disruption and intraretinal cysts. Diagnosis is wet AMD with serous pigment epithelial detachment. This patient managed with monthly intravitreal aflipercept for three consecutive injections and post-treatment OCT cross-section shows resolving of both subretinal fluid and serous PED and improved vision to counting fingers only due to subretinal scar formation and ellipsoid zone disruption. And the patient was followed up using PRN protocol. Keep in mind that treating serous or hemorrhagic PED is a clinical challenge with poor prognosis. However, better treatment response to virtual trap agents such as aflipercept and course or compercept in contrast to anti-VGF agents such as bifazizumab or ranipizumab. 76 years old female phakic presented with reduced vision her best corrected visual acuity is 2040 in her right eye while her left eye the best corrected visual acuity is 2030. Fundus examination shows drusen, RP elevation, and subretinal fluid. OCT shows PED features with a smooth RPE elevation which contains clear fluids that looks like homogeneous hyperreflective area with subretinal fluids accompanied by ellipsoid zone disruption and drusen. The patient was treated with seven injections of ranipizumab and maintained best corrected visual acuity 2040 with reduced PED volume and persistent subretinal fluids.
after the patient received the 80th uh, injection combined uh, complaint from a uh, reduced vision to 20 150 on OCT scan RP rip which indents the retina and increases hyperreflectivity in the area of contracted RPE with underlying shadowing hinders choroidal view in contrast to area where RPE where it ripped off which only Brooks membrane is visible diagnosis as weight AMD with serous pigment epithelial detachment complicated with RPE rip after its intravitreal anti-VGF injection the patient managed with uh, Continuing intravitreal injection of ranipidopap monthly until 21th injection where subretinal fluid has resolved and PED reduced in size significantly with subretinal scar formation and improved vision again up to 2035. Although subretinal scar formation and disrupted of ellipsoid zone accord, this corrected visual acuity improved near to level of baseline. A take home message. Although RPE rape is a complication of intravitreal anti-VGF treatment, intravitreal anti-VGF should not stop uh, to, as regressing choroidal neovascular membrane may stabilize vision. Please stay tuned for my next presentation about case report series part 3, which I will discuss cases of CSR and RPE atrophy. I hope you find this information are beneficial in your clinical practice. Thank you for listening.